Sound, Mind, and Body is brought to you by Inform Fitness. Get a full body workout with slow motion, high intensity strength training in just 20 minutes a week. For your free 20 minute workout and locations across the U.S., visit informfitness.com. Hello and welcome to Sound Mind and Body, a podcast where we talk about how to stay healthy, balanced, and well of mind, body, and spirit in today's crazy world with a dash of woo-woo. I'm Sheila Melody, and our guest today is Shonda Golden. She is the host and producer of the heavy metal music talk show, In the Vault, and with her husband, guitarist Greg Golden, owns Bizarre Guitar of Reno, Nevada, one of the largest family-owned and operated guitar stores in the entire world. So welcome, Shonda. Hi, how are you today? Oh, I'm just so fabulous, and it's so nice to have you on our Thank show. Thank you. I, I just love everything that you're doing with this. It's awesome. So thanks. Thanks for having me. Well, we had, uh, at the beginning of the show, I played the little clip from one of your uh, In the Vault intros where you say, I'm a rock chick, and I'm not going out to pasture. <laughs> I just love that. Because I'm not, nor should anyone. We should all <laughs> just keep trudging away, just keep rocking. <laughs> Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about how we met. Um, both Shonda and I, well, I was uh, for the Dio Cancer Fund, mm-hmm. the Ronnie James Dio Stand Up and Shout Cancer Fund, which I'm a part of. I went with my friend Wendy Dio uh, on a Monsters of Rock cruise. And on that cruise, um, there's lots of different activities that were fundraisers for the Dio Cancer right. Fund. And that is where I met Shonda. Mm-hmm. And let's tell them what kind of activity we met at. <laughs> <laughs> we met at the rock and roll bingo. I think it was like at 9 a.m. or something like <laughs> super early, but it was great for me because I don't kick up my heels, you know, late at night. So it was good. I could get a workout in and go play bingo. But, you know, I'm a huge Ronnie James Dio fan, Holy Diver. And I think you and I, t- I shared with this with you before how much that album meant to me. And then also, you know, Queen Wendy. So I really wanted to meet her and um, I wanted to support what uh, the Dio Foundation is doing because we lost quite a few family members to cancer. So my husband and I um, always try to help when we can. So that was cool. And then, you know, that they also had the auction. We didn't bid on anything that um, that cruise, but at the Axes and Anchors cruise, um, I went ahead and I purchased some items there. Yeah. And then we saw each other on that other cruise too. Right. And then I most recently, so there are cruises out there, everyone that, that are, um, bunch of rock stars and, uh, you know, they're just the best people, but then you see this, this gorgeous bombshell blonde, uh, person with just, you're just always happy. Oh, thank you. And always, whenever I see you, I just get a big smile <laughs> on my face and I just give you a big hug. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about you. You and your husband have a company in Reno, Nevada called Bazaar Guitar. That's right. Greg started that in 1974. So your husband is Greg Golden. He's a guitar right. player, correct? Yes. And Bizarre Guitar, so they've been around. It's a huge, it looks, I haven't ever been there, but it looks, you know, the picture's online. It looks like it's just a a really big store. It's one of the biggest on the West Coast. And, you know, he's survived, I don't know how many presidents. And he's, you know, he's just going to, he's going to have that store till he dies. And he doesn't, he and I don't think of retirement. So it's good that he's a business owner. Um, but that store has seen so many artists come in. Uh, the late Ronnie James Dio, when he was recording in our community, went in and shopped there. We've had um, Jimmy Page, his shop. We just had David Coverdale in the other day. I mean, just a lot of the who's who shop there because Greg has the best selection on vintage and rare guitars. And, and oh, he can cool. play. So that that's an added bonus for the artists when they come in because they're talking to someone who actually plays, who actually himself had a, um, you know, he was in a band called Morning Sun. So he's done the touring and all of that. So he's the real deal. And so these guys really appreciate that. And girls and girls. And do you work with him in the store or 
is that something you started, you yeah. know, how long? It, you've been married for a long time, right? You have a couple kids and... Yeah, but, um, you know, I came on board. I, I did the sales and marketing when social media was starting to come out. Thank goodness he never had uh, MySpace. Nothing against MySpace, but I I was never a fan of that. Um, I don't know. I just didn't think that it had it held really any value. So when Facebook came aboard, came on t- on the scene, we were active with that. Um, Twitter doesn't really suit our business model. So um, we're huge on Facebook. He's got a huge presence with that. And we continually um, share posts and information on Facebook. He sells guitars off of there. So it's been a great guide. So I started that with him and I produced the commercials, which are kind of kitschy. And we have those that run in our community. They're really fun commercials. I have my Bizarre Guitar Girls and they do the Bizarre Guitar Hair Girl flip at the end of the commercial. And Oh, where can we see one of those? I have I host everything on my YouTube channel. YouTube, uh, when that first came out, we jumped on board with that. And is that when you started your show, In the Vault? I started In the Vault um, in 2011. And, you know, okay. that's kind of a... In the Vault was actually just going to be like an infomercial for Bazaar in that as artists were coming into town, let's say Jackson, and one of them was a Jackson guitar, signature guitarist, um, we would interview them with the idea to sell the Jackson guitar, sell the artist, and of course, you know, get people into the store. And um, it started getting picked up like on Blabbermouth, my interviews. Oh. And then I was like, well, hey, maybe this is a little more than just an infomercial. <laughs> yeah, because so. you, you're really good at that too, like interviewing these people and getting the word, you know, you, because you're somebody that understands and connects in the, in the whole you know, heavy metal music world. Well, I love metal, you know, and I love hard rock. And so, yeah, so that was a natural fit. And then I started doing red carpet for Bonzo and Randy Rhodes remembered. Oh, wow. And, um, and then I love to read. I have my own library. And so I started, you know, reading books and reaching out to publicists and, or, or excuse me. Um, yeah, the publicists and seeing if I could interview these artists about the books they wrote. If I had my choice, I would interview uh, just authors because I, I enjoy reading. The research is there for me. And, you know, when I was at the last Dio event, I saw Eddie Trunk, who I think is just the coolest guy ever. And he's got a book coming out. And he said that he'd be honored if I interviewed him. And I was like kind of shaking. Oh, my God, I'd be honored to interview you. <laughs> And Eddie Trunk is the host of a show called uh, That Metal Show right. on VH1. And he's he's known throughout the industry. And he has also served as the host for every single one of our uh, Dio Cancer Fund events. Mm-hmm. Almost every single one. The only one he didn't was when there was... Uh, a huge storm back in New Jersey where he, well, back East and he couldn't fly out. So that's the only reason why he didn't, but he's been there for yeah, us. Yeah, He's great. He, he's a good guy. He's very knowledgeable. He has his own show on Sirius XM and he's very respected. So it'll be interesting to see what his biography is, you know, like who he came, where he came from. I don't know anything about him. Like you doing a memoir. Mm hmm. I'll have to interview him too. Yes, you should. <laughs> um, so who, okay, after all these interviews you've done, who was one of the most surprising interviews you've done in that whole, you know, industry? You know, I'd have to say Lemmy, uh, the late Lemmy from Motorhead, only because, uh, you know, he's he had such a commanding presence on stage and he was so macho. And, and when I met him, he was just absolutely darling and he loves women which I was surprised about because, you know, a lot of these guys, they're, they're good guys. And, uh, but they're, they're not very charming, let's say. And he certainly was, I was shocked by that. And I, I really enjoyed that time with him, even though it was very, very brief. I mean, he had that way and they talk about certain men are like that. Like they used to say like Ryan O'Neill was like that or, you know, um, but he was like that. I was, I remember thinking, Oh my God, I'm the, I'm the sexiest woman in this room right now. You know what I mean? He had like, he just he just had that je ne sais quoi. Yeah, he did. And what was great is I didn't expect it, and I'd never heard that he was like that because you know in the industry so small, you hear that certain guys are a certain way, and um, right. I never heard that about him. Wow. Yeah, I guess that's the last thing I would have thought. I mean, I knew you know people who did know him, but 
And one thing I heard about him that was very interesting to me was that he was a voracious reader, Mm -hmm. constantly reading. And again, you would never think that, Mm -hmm. right? No, no, you wouldn't. But I mean, hearing that, the kind of, and having that brief time with him, that kind of makes sense. You know, he, he, he didn't come off like he was intelligent. Yeah. He was intelligent. He didn't come off frivolous. There was right. something about him that was very, um, yeah, it was very sexy. And then people go, oh my God, how can you say that about Lemmy? Easy. I yeah, met right. him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to take a little break right now when we hear from our sponsor. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the golden tampon. Yay. <laughs> Okay, we're back. I'm talking to Shonda Golden. Mm -hmm. She is the host and producer of the heavy metal music show In the Vault. And recently, you started a new charity. I did. It's called The Golden Tampon or hashtag Golden Tampon. And, you know, um, I became aware of the fact that the women in our community, the homeless women in our community, um, were using socks and paper towels in lieu of tampons. And I just felt like, nope not on my watch. And, um, so this year I collect, I did a drive. I made it really silly. I put it on Facebook. I did these boomerangs and, you know, because we have the music store, it was great. Cause I could use, you know, like a drum kit and I could put tampons on it and pretend like I'm drumming the tampons and just <laughs> really, really silly stuff that, um, helped me raise 1200 boxes or excuse me, collect 1200 boxes of tampons for the women in our community and 1200 boxes. 1200 that boxes. is a lot of tampons. It was, it was insane, Sheila, because we were getting huge boxes. We were encouraging people. I say we, because it did take a village, but you know, I was encouraging, we were cur- encouraging people to, um, donate through Amazon. So we were getting shipments of guitars, you know, at the store along with huge boxes of tampons. And we ran. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. It's all these guys, right? And so, you know, my poor husband, he had boxes and boxes of tampons or people were walking in and just bringing tampons, you know, so there was tampons everywhere. And my husband's in the office trying to do a deal on a, you know, a (laughs) rare guitar. And, you know, everyone's just acting like it's normal. We don't see all these tampons, but um, when we- there's a fabulous picture of you with just like piles and boxes. You're sitting on this whole like mountain of tampons. Oh my gosh, we were, I was I was shocked, it, literally shocked when we started bringing because there's a bazaar is such a huge building that we were able to store the boxes. You know, as we started getting more and more and more. So when, when the staff started bringing up all the boxes and opening it up, I couldn't believe all wow. the tampons. And it's 1,200 conservatively because as I was doing the drive, it was like an eight-week drive, uh, excuse me, seven-week drive. As I was doing the drive, I was receiving donations and I was bringing them to the shelter. So oh, I wasn't okay. sitting on anything. As soon as I got them, I was delivering them. We held back purposely for that big ta-da reveal Um, but yeah. And so volunteers of America is who I work with and they want me to, uh, work with them in Sacramento. They, they had brought, brought it to the attention of the people in Washington, DC, which is great. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is wonderful because it's, um, it's so important. It's a funny, you know, my last name's golden, golden tampon. So it's fun. People can get behind that. But when you tell people that the homeless women, in my community or their community, they intuitively understand the need and they get it because everybody has a mother and people want to help. It's something that people can, um, they, they understand and, and, uh, they feel it, especially other women. Cause there have been times. I never thought about that before you, you told me about your golden tampon. I, I just did not think about it. And I'm sure a lot of people think about donating clothes or, food or personal hygiene. Yeah. But this is a different part of personal hygiene that people don't remember all the time. No. And I learned so much about what the women are actually doing. They're keeping, if they have, if they get a tampon, they're keeping it in their body too long or, you know, there's a lot of abuse on the streets. And so some of the women can't use tampons. They have to use pads. So I Uh, collected a lot of pads. I mean, the things I 
learned was just mind blowing. So now we just get the word out and there people are saying, you should take this nationwide. And I'm thinking, what? I can. (laughs) So is there a way to, for anybody who might be listening to contact you and maybe start their own drive in their local area? Oh my gosh, absolutely. There, um, well, you can reach out to me on Facebook. I have the, the golden tampon tampon drive Facebook page. I also have a website, www.goldentampon. Um, you can get a hold of me there. And I would be more than happy to help someone uh, do a tampon drive in their community because it's it's so needed. And I think it's wonderful when people donate other things like, you know, coats and things like that. But let's not forget that these women do need feminine hygiene products. They, they really and do. how long was, is, are you doing it yearly? Are you doing it ongoing? How are you doing it in your community? Well, I continue, I'm, Reno's small. So I think now I'm kind of the tampon tw- queen of Reno. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't a bad thing to be the queen of, (laughs) you know? So people um, are, they continue to send me tampon donations, which is wonderful. And I continue to send those back out to VOA, but the next drive will be in May of 2018. I'm going to run it for the month of May. And VOA has asked me what my goals are. And I said, well, I think, you know, I'd like to get 3000 boxes. They said, what about 5,000 boxes? So I said, yeah. I mean, I love to up the ante, right? So 5,000 boxes is the um, goal and they want me to work with their Sacramento branch. So it'll be Northern California, parts of Northern California and Northern Nevada. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm up for it. Everybody get in touch. uh, (laughs) Goldentampon.com, Shonda Golden, and find out how you can get involved. Please, please. On the next episode of Sound, Mind & Body... I sit down with my lead trainer, Ann Kirkland, and talk about the strength training method we do at our studio and why it's good to fail. Failure is winning. So I tell people that, and, you know, and I can see, especially when I've got a newer, a newer client who's still trying to get their head wrapped around going deeper into the woods, so to speak. And what I mean by that is going deeper into the intensity field. In my, in my opinion and in my experience, I see people, there's two levels of failure, muscle failure. There's perceived failure and then there's achieved failure. Your mind does not want to register how strong you actually are and it will stop you before your muscles can actually fail. That's next week on Sound Mind and Body. Hey, it's Tim Edwards, founder of the Inbound Podcasting Network and producer of Sound Mind and Body. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, you know that Sheila asks all of her guests how they stay of sound mind and body. Well, in part, my answer is my once a week high intensity workout at Sheila's strength training studio, Inform Fitness in Toluca Lake. That's right. I said once a week. And here's the best part. It's only for about 20 to 30 minutes. However, it's not an easy peasy half an hour. That's for sure. The workout is pretty intense. But it's extremely safe because my trainer, Joe, is guiding me the entire time. All of the movements are in slow motion and are in perfect form, hence the name, in form fitness. The workout's also quite effective. At the time of this recording, I'm 50 years old, and at my age, I should be getting weaker. But I'm not. I'm getting stronger every single week. You'll hear Sheila say several times here in the podcast that strength care is health care. Check it out for yourself. There's a free session waiting for you at informfitness.com. Click the button, try us free, right there on the homepage. Fill out the form and enjoy a slow motion, high intensity, full body workout in just 20 minutes. On the website, you'll also see that this offer applies to all Inform Fitness locations across the country. For a list of those locations, tons of videos and information regarding the Power of 10 workout, visit informfitness.com. So Shonda, you are also a model. So let's talk about that. You're modeling under the name Goldie Golden, right? Wasn't that what people do when they turn 40? (laughs) Oh my God. Not that many people do that when they turn 40. In your 40s, you decide to be a pinup model? (laughs) (laughs) I'm in my 40s. So I, yeah, I started pinup modeling. um, Well, first I was a figure model at the museum. I was modeling here locally, um, starting in like 2008. And then, um, you know, my husband after a while was kind of like, he didn't like that too much. So I, um, 
I still model for the museum. In fact, I just work Sunday, but I, I'm in costume typically for that. And then, but with the pinup modeling, I had a young model come into my store and, and we wanted to take test shots of her and send those over to Gretch because uh, she was in the pinup scene and she's so beautiful. She's one of my bizarre guitar girls. So I watched her pose and I was fascinated with how she posed because the girls posing now, they, the shutter speed's so fast, it's so digital that when I was a kid and I was modeling on frame or excuse me, on film, you know, you only had like certain frames that you could do. So you had to be very thought out, you know, there wasn't much time to like kind of dance around, which I see a lot of these girls doing, but with pinup, it's a slower pace and it's very presentational. Mm. And so I was, I, I got into pinup because I was fascinated with how they posed and, um, cause I think modeling is an art form. Yeah. And, yeah. And art. so I, so I started doing it just to kind of check it out. And then it took off and I ended up doing a, a couple of national magazines. I was just, you know, I was in Rebel Rods, Car Culture Deluxe. Um, I was just in a uh, bachelor magazine for this, for this winter issue. And then I'm being, I'm going to be in the um, new pinup magazine, bombshell magazine that comes out November 15th tomorrow. So wow. I've been in over 20 something magazines. I've done calendars. Um, yeah, it's been really great. Pinup's been good to me. And I, and I love the women in pinup. They're driving the scene. They're uh, young. A lot of them are very tatted and uh -huh. um, they're just embracing that whole 19, 1940s vibe. And they're doing a great job of it too. Well, I've seen a few pictures that you had on your site and they're just really cool and very, you know, yeah, it's, it's got that vibe of the 1940s. and mm -hmm. It's hip. Just, I mean, I think it's fun because the girls get to, they get to dress up. It's not like some people think pin up and they think like our, our grandmothers or our great grandmothers with the, the victory rolls or the liberty rolls or whatever they're called. It's not like that. I mean, they're taking right. it and making it really sexual, you know, sensual and sexy and, and um, sometimes fun. You know, I've done it's some fun shots too. I think it's adorable. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I, I might think a little differently about it. <laughs> so um, you live in this kind of crazy world of guitars and musicians and, you know, heavy metal and pinup modeling and everything. So tell me, how do you stay of sound mind and body? How do you stay healthy, well and balanced in your life? Well, one of the things I do is I work a 12 step program because I suffer from alcoholism. So for me, it's really important to stay connected in my fellowship, but it, you know, it hasn't been easy because once you remove the alcohol, then you have to deal with all the other stuff. So I keep myself really grounded with, um, I have morning meditation or coffee with God. I take all my vitamins. I try to eat clean and I work out. But I'm very, you know, I'm very connected with my higher power. So that's very important to me to have that relationship with God. And that's how I, I really keep it all together. Because if I don't have that going, then I'm spinning out of control. And every morning I do a gratitude list. Oh, that's a really good thing. Yeah. I, the gratitude list is great because it's, you know, pen to paper and it keeps me focus on what I should be grateful for, especially in such a chaotic world that we live in now. Yes. And, you know, everything, it's anything goes nowadays, just anything goes. And um, I think a lot of it has to do with people not being connected with a higher power. It's a very, uh, you know, that whatever you want to call it, if you, you know, call it God or call it Buddha or call it, you know, Allah or whatever, it's, there is something to that. And I call it woo woo. Uh huh. <laughs> um, you know, it's my woo woo connection. And I, you know, had lost that recently. And I, this is part of my journey in finding myself again and finding my woo woo again is getting healthy, getting, you know, all dialed in with my, uh, balanced and, and work and, uh, you know, doing this podcast was mm -hmm. one of the things, you know, pursuing something that you love. Right. And so, sharing. Yes. And sharing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you, okay. So we're going to get to, we, ha I have some questions that I ask all of my guests. Okay. Let's ask you these questions. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what is a favorite sound? For me, my favorite sound, I love the sound of rain on a tin roof. 
believe it or not, I do. I like that. I love rain too, but on a tin roof. That's interesting. That's from my Hawaii days when I lived in the islands. Oh, Mm -hmm. okay. Rain on a tin roof. Love it. All right. What's a favorite memory? I would say favorite memory was, I mean, I have a lot of memories just because I have so many blessings. So two memories right off the bat are both times I gave birth to my daughters because uh, that was the most beautiful thing ever to give birth and have these just beautiful little babies. And then I think that um, probably just all, all around listening to music with my little sister Listening to vinyl, she and I, uh, I introduced her to the David Bowie Aladdin Sane album. Ooh. And yeah, and so she instantly connected to that. So those are probably my best memories with my little sister. Okay, so what is a favorite place? I would have to say my bed. (laughs) (laughs) Because I've got a a small library there. I've got a Beats speaker there. I've got a two <laughs> baskets full of books. It's warm. My dogs come in, my daughters come in to lay on me or whatever. So Aww. probably, yeah, my, that's where my husband and I sleep together. That's where, you know, so I, I have to say my bed. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. <laughs> um, okay. So final question, what is the most woo woo thing you've ever done? Well, I'd probably say my most woo-woo moment um, was when I was jumping through lava tubes in in Kona. Oh, wow. Yeah, I used to do that. It was so crazy. There was an opening at the cliff where uh, the lava had um, eroded, and so you could jump through this big, huge puka in the earth and then land in the water, and the water would push you out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was pretty dangerous, but it was fun. So I would say probably jumping off those cliffs and jumping into those lava tubes. How far were the lava tubes? How far like, down was it? Um, probably twelve feet. Oh my gosh, that sounds pretty scary to me. You know when you're tr- when you <laughs> when you're twenty. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I would never do anything like that today. I would never jump off a cliff. But you know, I mean, I didn't have children then. There was no responsibility. Yeah. But my daughters just went back to Maui. My father's family is from Paia. And oh. so um my daughters just went and they were jumping off of cliffs. So they get it. They had a woo-woo moment too. I didn't have the, when seeing them jumping off of cl- cliffs gave me no woo-woo. <laughs> <laughs> You were like, oh my God, they're going to kill themselves. Well, why did I tell them I did that? (laughs) (laughs) So probably that. That's wonderful. Thank you. So (laughs) thank you so much for being with us, Shonda. Um, Let's talk about how to get in touch with you again. Uh, If you want to get involved in Shonda's Golden Tampon Drive, you can just go to www.goldentampon.com. Uh, is there any other? They can uh, go, or- yeah, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, the Golden Tampon has its own uh, Facebook page there. Okay. And then, of course, I have everything else that everyone has, the Instagram and Twitter and stuff. But please, and you know, you don't have to necessarily just donate to my uh, to Golden Tampon. If you could just get a box of tampons and bring it to your local homeless shelter, you have no idea what that means to those women. Because by doing that, we collectively are giving them back their dignity, which they so desperately deserve. These women, we can't judge how they got there. We, we know they were dealt a really bad hand and there's some severe trauma involved with why they're in homeless shelters. So let's not look at any of that, be compassionate and know that it's there and just let's get them some tampons. That's what we can all do. That is a great thing. And I'm going to look for a shelter that I can do that for. Uh, yeah. You can also look Shonda and her husband up at uh, bizarreguitar.com. They are mm-hmm. located in Reno, Nevada. And you can check out Shonda on her YouTube channel, In the Vault with Shonda Golden. Yes, I've interviewed all kinds of great artists, and I'm looking for 2018 to interview some more. So it's going to be a lot of fun. When am I going to see you next, Shonda? Well, I'm thinking about going down to Namalama Ding Dong. I might. Oh. <laughs> It's the NAM show the in NAM the NAM show. Yeah. Anyway. And, and catching myself some NAM thrax. Uh, th- you know, I work with the Bonzo Bash people, and so they want me to come down there and do um, the red carpet again. But we're still kind of up in the air. We have some um, projects coming up here. So I don't know. I'm hoping for sure, NAM. But whenever uh, Queen Wendy does another uh, 
Dio event for sure. I'll be down there. I wasn't able to cover the event this year because my mother-in-law member, I don't know if you remember, but my mother-in-law, I was caring for her. Oh, that's right. Yes, that's right. You did tell me that. Mm-hmm. So she passed. Oh. Yeah. So God gave her mercy. And so she passed in February. And then when when you guys did the last Dio event, I just, I, you know, I really wasn't up for it. That's another thing right. I do. If, I, if I'm sad, I, I feel my feelings. And you don't try to force yourself to do something that will make you, you know, stuff down those feelings. Right. And, you know... When you cover those events, people want you to be happy. I'm always happy, but I felt like to honor my mother-in-law and to be respectful and and to honor my own pain, I I took a step back from a lot of my work. But 2018, I'm coming back with a vengeance. Okay. (laughs) I cannot wait. We'll have to get in touch and somehow see each other when when you're down here again. Oh, for sure. For sure. I'd love to. And tell Queen Wendy I said hello. I definitely will. Thank you so much, Shonda Golden. Thank you. Well, that's it for this episode. We'd love to hear from you. How do you stay of sound mind and body in your life? What's the most woo-woo thing you've ever done? Do you have a favorite sound, a favorite memory, a favorite place to be? Why don't you record a voice memo or email us at podcast at soundmindbodypodcast.com. Thanks for listening. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like the podcast, give us a review on iTunes. It really helps new listeners find us. Thank you to our producer, Tim Edwards, and the Inbound Podcasting Network. Get in touch. I'm on Instagram at Melody and on Twitter at SheilaMelody1. Or find us on Facebook. Search for Sound Mind Body Podcast. I'm Sheila Melody. Join us next week as we explore, enlighten, and evolve.